Thank you all for participating in this briefing. A historic day for the Security Council in the UN. Since the Security Council, the presidency will be run from the, the Dominican Republic. Before I share with you the details of the plan for this month, allow me to be ver to very briefly comment on the working methods that we intend to implement during our presidency. These meetings, and I would say it once, so you, are, will be called informal plan of VTTs of the Security Council. It was approved by the members of the Security Council unanimously. So first and foremost, it is important to note that the Council will continue its work. We are determined to work with all Council members to continue the discussion on its agenda, given the extraordinary circumstances we're all facing with COVID-19. In order to do that, it is clear that the Council needed to adapt. Since mid-March, as you all know, the Council has held private VCTs. Now, under the presidency of the Dominican Republic, it will hold open VTCs, VTCs and closed VTCs. The open VTCs will substitute the usual briefings to the Council, while the closed VTCs will substitute the closed consultations. But let me explain further the open VTCs. These open VTCs will include a live feed of the section where the briefers present their reports. Upon the, upon the conclusion of their reports, the live feed will be terminated. However, the statements of council members in the remainder of the open VTC will be circulated by the president of the council in a compiled document to all UN membership and as a document of the council. We are also planning to continue the practice during the, chi during the Chinese presidency to adopt press elements of press statements after each meeting. The idea behind all these arrangements is to make our work as transparent and as inclusive as possible under the circumstances. Now, let me share with you the main elements of our informal program of work for the month of April. On Tuesday, April 7th, we will hold VTC meetings, both open and closed, on the major developments in Mali, including the implementation of the Agreement on Peace and Reconciliation, cooperation between security presences in the country, implementation of the MINUSMA Adaptation Plan, and potentially in the impact of coronavirus pandemic in Mali and the Sahel. On April 9th, a MINURSO close VTC meeting will take place. The special representative and head of MINURSO, Colin Stewart, will brief on the most recent developments on the ground. On April 13th, we will discuss the political situation in Syria. Resolution 2254, adopted in 2015, called for a Syrian-led and Syrian-owned political process that included the establishment of a constitutional committee to draft a new constitution and call for general elections. After its launch in November, the CC has not met again. During this briefing, we expect to hear from the Special Envoy Peterson about the different, different actions he has taken with the parties in order to mobilize the committee after the recent agreement on the agenda for the next session. Of course, the issue of a national ceasefire will also be most likely addressed as the situation of how the COVID-19 pandemic is impacting both the humanitarian and the political situations in a country devastated by almost 10 years of conflict. 
On the 14th, we will focus on Colombia. This, section, this session will focus on the latest 90-day report from the Secretary General and the most recent developments. On April 15th, the High Representative for Disarmament Affairs, Izumo Nakamitsu, will brief the Council on the monthly report from the Director General of the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons regarding the progress in the elimination of Syrian Chemical Weapons Program, activities carried out by the Technical Secretariat with respect to Syria, progress achieved by the Declaration Assessment Team, as well as activities and updates of current investigations by the fact-finding mission. Moreover, the Council is expecting in early April the first report of the identification and investigation team of the OPCW on the work done thus far to identify the perpetrators of the use of chemical weapons in the Syrian Arab Republic. The members of the Council will discuss its finding if the report is issued on the expected date, of course. Then on April 16th, we will discuss Yemen. This conflict, as you all know, has evolved into the biggest humanitarian crisis in the world, with over 80% of the population needing some form of humanitarian aid. In response to the Secretary General's call for global cessation of facilities in March 25th, and the positive public response from both parties, we are we're looking forward to having them meet under the special envoy, envoy's auspices to discuss the de-escalation. Unfortunately, over the weekend, there was a serious escalation of hostilities, jeopardizing the special envoy's attempts to mediate discussions. We are following this situation very closely, also when it comes to COVID-19. On Tuesday, April 21st, a meeting regarding the maintenance of international peace and security entitled Protecting Civilians from Conflict-Induced Hunger will be held via BTC. This is one of the presidency featured events. Our main objective with this event is to keep the issue alive in the Council and to find ways to better implement Resolution 2417 adopted two years ago. The briefing will also coincide with the launch of the Global Report on Food Crisis, where it will, bear, where it will be clear that conflict continues to be one of the major drivers of food insecurity, hunger, and famine. We have a lineup of briefers that really honor us. FAO's Director General, WFP's Executive Director David Beasley, and NRC Secretary General Jan Egeland. We hope to adopt a PRSST after this meeting. Furthermore, on April 22nd, we will have a BTC on the Great Lakes region, which will review the Secretary General's report on the situation in the region and the implementation of the peace, security, and cooperation framework for the Democratic Republic of Congo and the region. The special envoy is expected to present it and be available to provide answers to any outstanding questions. April 23rd and 24th, we expect to hold an open BTC in the Middle East, as well as a meeting on the United Nations mission of, on, in Kosovo. The conflict between Israel and Palestine, with its undeniable regional ramifications, continues to deepen threats to international peace and security, as well as the nation in this council. During this event, it is expected that members continue to promote 
a negotiated solution based on mutual respect and international agreed commitment and principles. I do hope that co the, the dialogue right now being held between Israelis and Palestinians on COVID-19 opens a big opportunity for dialogue in other important issues. Regarding Kosovo, the Council will hold the first periodic briefing of the year on the situation in Kosovo. The special representative and head of the UN interim administration mission in Kosovo, Mr. Zahir Tanin, will be the main briefer. The final week of our presidency on April 27, we will hold another feature event, an open BTC on such an important matter as youth, peace, and security. It will focus on accelerating, on accelerating the implementation of the WPS agenda in light of the fifth anniversary of the resolution 2250. The first report of the UN Secretary, uh, Secretary General on WPS was issued in March, reaffirming that the agenda is a central component in supporting national efforts towards peace. And the awareness still needs to be translated into concrete actions to ensure that all actors can develop, deliver on the pillars of Resolution 2419 and 250. Before the objective of the open debate, therefore the objective of the open debate is to provide a platform of discussion for member state, states to take stock on progress made regarding the implementation of these resolutions and to share best practices and lessons learned at the national and regional level as well as to discuss recommendations and priorities for actions in this respect. On the 28th, we will fo focus on UNIF UNISPA, so Sudan and South Sudan. In May 2020, the mandate of the United Nations mission in Abiy, Sudan, expires. So it's expected that the discussion will assess the progress of both countries meeting the benchmarks established by the Secretary General for the eventual departure of the mission from the area. It will also focus on the reduction of troops, the increase of the police contingent, and the SG proposal for the inclusion of civilian elements in the mission, especially the appointment of a civilian representative as alternate chief of the mission. It will also consider the fragile situation in both Sudan and South Sudan, as well as its effects in Abiy. It is expected that the Council will encourage parties to the redouble efforts to comply with the benchmarks established by the SG especially those related to pending border disputes, and will recommend an update on the implementation of these benchmarks by both states. Finally, on April 29th, we conclude with a monthly briefing on the humanitarian situation in Syria. During this briefing, it is expected that we continue to monitor the situation developing in the country with the COVID-19 pandemic. In the Syrian context, this is so critical. With overcrowded IPD camps and shelters, detention facilities and others being under any possible international standard, the impact of the pandemic could be overwhelming. The cross-border operation towards the Northwest is critical to save the life of millions, but can also expect more information on the response to the pandemic in the Northeast, where, as you know, the UN has very, very limited access. 
It is also expected that more information is given regarding the response in the Northeast, given the closure of the Al Jarubia crossing. Another issue we expect to address will be the report of the Board of Inquiry on attacks to health facilities in the Idlib province during the military escalation that started in last April. With that, I conclude and I'm ready to receive your questions. Thank you. Ambassador, your first question is from Abdel Hamid. Are you planning to hold a special meeting on the escalating fight in and around Tripoli that is going out of hand, leaving 3 million civilians in double risk corona and cannon shells? Yeah, thank you for that question. I have not received that request, but we will hold the necessary things to implement it. If if I get the request. Okay, your second question is, um, there are several journalists asking the same, like Abdel Hamid, Josita Sain, Water, Aveline, and other. And the question is, are you planning, are the Security Council planning on having on having a special meeting about COVID-19? Are you expected a lot of emergency meetings on this? Well, yes, my understanding is that it's being negotiated at the moment, right now. It was brought up in the ambassador's uh, field of uh, Yes, I think, Ambassador, you, you just um, mixed two questions. Um, but um, can you, uh, you were answering about the question on if the, uh, how do you see the Tunisia resolution on COVID-19? Can you answer now about if the Security Council is planning on having a COVID-19 meeting this month? Yes, uh, uh, as I told you, it was brought up by a few ambassadors in our meeting, and it, 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 it's taking shape as we speak, okay? We will let the press know about it. it. Thank you. Your second question. Ambassador, um, from Abdel Hamid again, are you going to broadcast live any meeting for real meeting in person during the month of April? If not, are you at least would broadcast any live uh, broadcast live any meeting? We are we're bound by technology. As of now, the briefers are we going to be are we going to bro, be broadcasted live as we speak? And if technology uh, allows us, uh, we'll, we will expand that to uh, the statements by ambassadors. From Afdikhar Ali, Associated Press of Pakistan, Mr. Ambassador, last week the Security Council held a meeting on the situation in Afghan, in which calls were made for the two rival claimants of the presidency to show flexibility and unite to form an exclusive government. Again, last week the Security Council held a meeting on the situation in Afghan in which calls were made for the two rival claimants of the presidency to show flexibility and unite to form an, an, an inclusive government. The impact, but sir, the impasse still goes on while coronavirus cases are increasing. Would the Security Council reaffirm its call for the feuding Afghan leaders and end political instability? Well, this item, the, the, this item is not in this month's agenda. The, that item was in last month's agenda, but we're open. You know, we are. We will engage. This uh, our presence is all about engagement and transparency, and let the whole year membership. And we will tackle all the 
first uh, subjects, uh, the items in our agenda, uh, we're, uh, as you know, we're very open to anything that is important that has to be brought up at any moment. We were having some difficulties, so we are going to ask the ambassador again the questions about the COVID-19 situation. And the questions were, ambassador, from Evelyn, brother, Josita, and Abdel Hamid, um, are, is the Security Council having COVID-19 um, special meetings this month? And are you planning or expecting to have uh, many emergency meetings on this? Yes, yeah. As we all know, COVID-19 will be the main topic in the world as we speak. It's, it, we, we're working on the PCs, are working on it. It was requested by five or six ambassadors, and we will make it. We will make it happen. I hope to have maybe for sure next week or before. Between Mr. Ambassador, a question from Abdel Hamid. Why equate between Israel and Palestine? You said they need mutual respect. Who is not respecting who? You said a solution based on UN resolutions. Who is not respecting UN resolutions? Well, you know, the Israeli Palestine issue is something that comes up every month. And really, I just hope that this dialogue they're having because of the COVID-19 opens the door, you know, for an open dialogue on things that have been for years pending and when they start talking because dialogue is the only solution and this two-state solution that needed and we need to, I hope they, they just really get going. It is so important for the world. We care so much about a two-state solution. We are going to repeat um, Rader's question about Tunisian resolution. How do you see the future of the Tunisian resolution on the COVID-19? If, if there is, uh, my understanding is that is also being negotiated at this moment, you understand? So we have to wait for those negotiations and what will come out from it. Ambassador, we are going to repeat as well due to some difficulties earlier. Um, will you speak to the media after every council meeting via BTC in a way that we can ask questions? And what meetings are going to be open? Many, we hope. Well, uh, we're going we're gonna to try, as the Chinese uh, uh, presence he had, to have press elements after every meeting that's in closed doors, okay? But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm always available, you know, if I, if I do have those press elements or if anybody wants to you know about anything, we can make it happen, we can arrange that, okay? From Rather again, the open meetings would be only to hear for us the briefers, why not the 15 members too? Well, that's the technical issue we have right now, you know. We're walking through this, you know, this is like a, a big sailboat, wherever the wind takes us. Uh, SCAD has done a great job in the technology. It's, it still needs further to uh, improve it. And uh, eventually, you know, we just really hope that uh, uh, not only briefers are live, but also ambassador statements. But right now we have found a way Technology is the what stops us from holding everything live. So once technology issues are solved, we will, you know, be glad to hold the whole thing live. But you will get a copy of the statements by each ambassador, although we would wish it would be live. Can you please, from Lane Batch, can you please confirm that all speeches of the UN, uh, the UN Security Council members in closed and open BTC meetings will be circulated regularly after each session? Yes, that was approved in our working methods and you will have that happen. Why, why are all the BTC meetings considered informal? Well, 
you know, these are circumstances that we have never gone through in the Security Council. And we have to find a way, you know, I'm a pragmatist. I, I like to use common sense. And for, for the Dominican Republic presidency, the most important thing is to make it transparent in that the community, international community, see that we're engaged. We won't go, go to and argue about any comments on the, which way it would be helped. Everybody was happy to this. We thank everybody for our team worked very, very hard to have a unanimity on our working methods. And what for us is important is to have that message sent and that we're engaged and that we're trying to solve these great, great times we're living in. You know, this COVID-19 has made things much, much worse for the whole world. Imagine the places where we have problems, problems in peace and security, you know. It is very, very challenging. So we have to be open, co cooperative, and it's the Secretary General's message, you know. These are times to find bridges more than anything else. From Yoshida Singh, can we expect any council resolution on COVID-19 when the United Nations Security Council meeting happens to discuss the issue? We have not discussed the issue of a resolution uh, between ambassadors. We're first going to hold that, we're expecting to hold that meeting, and then we'll see how events play out. Are there any more questions? Any questions? Anybody else? I think uh, I gave a pretty good open discussion. And uh, as you know, I'm always open to any discussion with any of you. So I do thank you for this, to listening to us. And just, you know, we are living in challenging times, you know. Must keep safe and must, you know, of, Follow the rules, you know, and see how safe we can stay. That help us. Thank you very much.